What's up, everybody? This is Stocks for Real, and today we're going to talk about Roku, okay? I already put it on the on the watch list for you guys, uh, letting you know I was going to talk about it. I gave you some time so you can do your own due diligence because, you know, I can only make videos when I can make videos. So uh, instead of waiting for me, I put it out there, and hopefully you did your own research, and this only adds to um, how you're feeling about the company and then how you're going to move, okay? So first, um, I want to say that uh, the video, I'm going to try my best to uh, make them more structured. Uh, so there's a level of consistency as far as how I do uh, do these. So uh, bear with me as I kind of go through this. Again, I'm not rehearsing or anything like that. I'm just going to shoot it through. I'll watch it back later and then see what I can do to improve just to make things more efficient and clear for you guys. Okay. Um, I'm a student of the game. So anything that I say uh, it's not a suggestion for you to buy, hold, or sell, and I highly recommend that you do your own research, okay, because I'm just a guy on YouTube um, talking out what I'm thinking about doing with my portfolio and my money. What you do with yours is is your own business, right? So, uh, first of all, who's Roku, right? Roku is like the OG of streaming devices, okay? So uh, they were established in 2002. They had these little boxes that you would go ahead and connect it to your TV, which would give you the ability to stream um, through the TV when streaming wasn't really an option back when uh, when um, these TVs start to come out, right? Um, <clears throat> so now we have smart TVs um, and one of my biggest issues or concerns was, well, what's the point of Roku, right? Just to give you a little background, I come from the Best Buy world. I used to sell in home theater department or home essentials, whatever it's called now. I was a supervisor and then I became an assistant manager. So I have some history with a lot of the, the tech and stuff. And I'll let you know firsthand, I didn't sell a lot of Roku boxes. Um, despite us being trained on the product or whatever, I just didn't understand it because by that time, smart TVs were becoming more and more relevant um, and more common uh, in the household. So I never seen the purpose, right? Um, so I've made money with the company through some trades here and there. And that's part of the reason why it's on my uh, my docket um, for like talking to you guys about it because everything that I'm presenting to you uh, is um, uh, is stocks that I've historically made money on. And I'm just kind of rounding back to see what makes sense now or not. So just so you know, um, uh, get an idea of how I'm finding these stocks. I've had history with these stocks in the past. So anyway, um, so I never really understood the reason for Roku um, or the setup boxes, you know. Um, so it is what it is, right? I owned a Google uh, Chromecast. I owned, uh, I didn't own a Fire Stick, but I know many people that have, and those are, you know, that's the comp competition. Um, so back then, I understand it gave you more streaming options uh, and more content. Um, but nowadays, I'm like, is it is it worth worth my time? But through my research, it just might be, and we'll see what you think. Okay, so Roku. Uh, unlike the competition, they focus on bringing neutral um, platform, uh, a neutral platform with tons of streaming options um, and channel options. So it's not just their own, like uh, like Amazon or Google. Okay, um, they're like level playing ground. So Roku actually offers um, uh, like a consistent and user friendly experience um, that now has such a, a following. Uh, or base because you know people will buy Roku and they'll just and if they upgrade their TV they just kind of plug and play to Roku or they'll get a, um, a next generation version but that user interface is familiar to customers versus customers hopping and back and forth between a Samsung or LG or um, a Vizio or whatever TV a Sony um, because what's the latest and greatest they they all take turns what doesn't change necessarily is Roku, that setup box, that user experience, that interface that people are familiar with. And people like convenience and familiarity. When they want to watch TV, they just want to go ahead and press a button and then do what they got to do. So if um, so, anyway, their user base, you know, their 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 followings essentially, okay? Um, Roku doesn't change in that aspect. So why am I interested in Roku, right? Uh, the, one of the main reasons is that because I believe they're undervalued, right? Um, now, when I say undervalued, 
I know that just recently they reported like a negative ROE uh, and then they also reported like a negative revenue. However, um, that's not the whole picture. Um, don't get me wrong. You can't ignore those things. And that should be a cause for pause for a lot of people before investing in any company, especially if the, the PE ratio is negative. That just means that they are not profitable. Right um, now, Roku, um, however, the, the whole picture is the consistency of their revenue growth uh, combined with the, 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 the growth potential of the company. So you have one issue where you have um, either a lower or lesser revenue and you're not as profitable. And then you got other situations where, well, you're still making money, right? And then there's still things that you can do that aren't complicated that would uh, in turn increase your profitability, right? And there's a sample size out there for Roku, which makes it make sense, right? So what are you starting to see? You're starting to see Netflix and Amazon with um, with um, uh, commercials or apps, uh, ad advertisements, right? Um, that is generating revenue, um, uh, ad revenue for those companies. So Roku isn't really doing that. Um, but I guarantee you that by uh, allowing advertisements on devices, uh, uh, Amazon and um, and Netflix and and the Hulu's of the world, what whatever, uh, Disney Disney Plus, they are making that much more money by opening up their platform to advertisements, right? So anyway, that's why I'm interested because that that's a a pool um, uh, that they have not really tapped into, right? Um, so and and it's easily to see, right? It's not something complicated. They just have to, yeah. Anyway, um, so the breakdown. So a couple of things, like so, the market position for um, Roku is very, very strong, right? So they are the actual leaders uh, in streaming devices over Google and Amazon. And what's great about the Roku brand is that they're mentioned in the same sentence as those juggernauts, and they're beating them in this category, which is amazing, right? Um, so. That's one thing. Uh, financially, they're strong, right? They have consistent revenue growth uh, with 7.76% increase in two, uh, 2023 over 2022. So that's year over year growth, right? And they generated about 13, I'm sorry, that is $3.48 billion. Okay, that's insane. So Q4 2023, they reported $984 million. Um, with a reported of 13.54% increase um, over Q4 2022 over the same period of time. So that's pretty significant, right? Um, so those are a couple a couple things. Uh, the last thing is uh, under the financial piece is that the profitability is a concern, right? You can't really shake that, but we've already kind of partially discussed how they can turn that around. But it's the inconsistency. Sometimes they are, sometimes they're not. And then investors don't really like that. Um, what's cool is that they do have um, a fair amount of free cash flow, uh, which uh, gives them that, you know, that peace of mind. Right. They have that flexibility to um, kind of sustain. Right. Like they're they're not they're not hurting. Right. For, for anything. So that's good that they have a positive free cash flow. They just need to figure out the profitability piece, which I think is super simple. Um, if they want to do it, they'll do it. It is what it is. We'll see what happens in the, in the earnings to come uh, and what, what they kind of come up and create um, and create as far as an options for, for them. So the growth potential, we, we partially talked about it, but uh, essentially platform monetization. Right. So uh, through advertisements and subscription services, they'll have that piece taken care of. No problem. In my opinion, they have an opportunity for hardware, hardware sales expansion. Um, and then they also have uh, opportunity for international growth uh, with uh, the Roku's potential to enter new markets like overseas or whatnot uh, and just expand on the user experience. So um, that's my take essentially on Roku um, from a fundamental side of things. I didn't want to get too much into the numbers. You guys can look up the EPSs and things like that. I, I can't say that... Um, well, I kind of covered a lot of like what's important as far as the revenue uh, and the profitability or lack thereof, um, and then just the overall year-over-year -year growth. I think those are essentially the essentials um, for for this. 
uh, I think Roku is at a premium position to uh, to be considered uh, investable as far as like a uh, dollar cost averaging into uh, into it long term. Um, if the company doesn't pivot uh, to more of a monetized system, uh, then it's going to be really hard to see Roku become a profitable a profitable juggernaut uh, and and whatever, right? So um, if that fails, if we don't see any um, future guidance that that would otherwise have us see Roku as a you know a banger, uh, then you know what we got to do, right? So um, let's look at to point this out. Let's go here. So I wanted to point this out. So Roku on tip ranks, they're saying the, anal the analyst forecast right now, you have a um, a low of $51, um, mid range and a high of $120 as far as what they're estimated uh, with the average of $86.47. So there's a 34% upside for Roku um, between these ranges, right? So that's pretty, that's pretty solid in my opinion. Um, now, as far as what the analyst consensus are, you got 10 saying to hold, 8 saying to buy, and then 3 telling you to sell. Uh, so ultimately, overall, it's a hold for a stock. And part of that is because the inconsistency of the profitability and the um, and analysts not really knowing what uh, Roku's plan is to uh, combat that. Um, you know, so that, that's essentially what that is. Okay, so the most recent... Uh, update was by Tim. Uh, he says it's a buy, uh, estimating about $88 a share. Uh, and that was reiterated 24 days ago. So holds, buys. You got a buy here at $100. This guy has a bad review. Um, let's see, who has a solid review? Shweta, $80, uh, reiterated. So, uh, but a five star uh, analyst there. So, this is looking pretty solid. I mean, either which way is a hold or a buy. And most of the holds are above the current price point of like the mid 60s. So we're going to go into the technicals right now. And so you can see what I see. Where is my style? Here it is. All right. So let's move over to the technicals. All right. So here's Roku. All right. I already gave you guys a, a quick preview as far as what, what it looks like. Uh, you can see early on, uh, like in 2021, to yeah 2021 so january january to july we had the double top and then from there we just kind of crashed down um like a rock essentially to um 57 um actually we went further than that excuse me looks like we went right around the 40 dollar range that's how far we fell okay um so we've retaken we broke through a floor uh, and we've retaken the floor of um, 57.83. So since we bounced above that, we haven't looked back so far. Um, but that doesn't mean that there's not room to continue falling down. Now, in my um, in my technical analysis that I posted to you guys, right? Um, let me make sure I have it correct here. I let you know that we're in a, li a Livermore cylinder. OK, so this is a, a sign of a uh, of a bullish reversal or a, a reversal. So we had this big drop right here. And then now we're in this channel with the higher highs and higher lows. OK, so that's looking pretty good. So when I zoom in, this is the week view. OK. And as you can see, earnings is April 24th uh, with an uh, estimated EPS of negative 68 cents. Uh, just so you know, Q4 2023, we had a beat um, by 56%. Actually, that's wrong now. Uh, I got mixed mixed um, information. So I actually think it was about 13% that they uh, that, that there was a surprise by. So they reported negative 55 cents versus 65 cents. And some may say, well, why in the heck uh, did we drop? Because this is the drop right here, which was right, right on earnings, right? Yep right there and uh because the reason is because of the, the profitability and inconsistency of that uh even though they beat eps they're still losing right they're still losing um a little bit so anyway i'm gonna zoom in here 
and then I'm going to go break this down a little bit more. So let's get out of the week view and let's go right into the day. Okay. So on the day, as you can see, higher highs, higher lows. Okay. So we're definitely in a, a little bit of an uptrend. Now, what I notice is that <clears throat> we have a little bit of an imbalance here, but we have an imbalance here followed by demand. See that? This is um, a strong signal for a continuation towards the upside. And that's one of the reasons why I'm looking into Roku. Um, and I'm technically positioned, just so you know, I'm in early because uh, of us breaking this halfway point of 63.84. Uh, okay, so you do you. I've already said that the safe play is uh, waiting till we hit above 66.29. Um, but I'm doing me, and if we break below this marker here, um, I'm likely just to get out. And then more than likely, if we do fall and break below the 63.42, uh, we're going to go ahead and retest um, uh, the demand zone right at the, the top end of the imbalance that we see here. Okay. So anyway, so now we are waiting for it to break this channel. Okay and looking for a um a bullish run up now even if we don't rock it uh, i mean just absolutely go like to we're not going to see previous highs for a while but this is a huge leg all right this is a huge move from 66.29 to what's this 123 dollars that's not not doable when you have a consistency and revenue growth uh, by as much as they have, um, then and if profitability is the only factor, and then there's a clear path to towards profitability with the company that's been around since 2002, I don't see, I don't see it not happening. So, the more I look into this company, the more I just want to buy in some shares um, and just establish a position more so than um, riding call options. So, but this is where I'm at. OK, if you have any questions, let me know. Um, I'm trying to see if there's anything else I can say to say about this. But the, the ultimate thing is that this was trading right above four hundred eighty seven dollars back in. Was that twenty twenty one August? That's insane. Right. This is one of those companies that still has not uh, recovered from pre market uh, uh, pre pandemic highs similar to Disney. And that's why I got into Disney at eighty eight dollars. So I'm going to assume that I'm right about this too, but time will tell. So this is Stocks For Real. Thanks for rocking with me. I appreciate you guys. Uh, the love and support hit 700 followers. I can't believe it. I was just thinking like, man, like this is going to be tough. I was just at 20 followers on some BS stuff that I posted a long time ago. So I appreciate all the support and um, you guys give me your feedback as far as how I operate these videos. Hopefully this was as constructive as the previous ones. And that's all I got for you. Um, take care.